Good morning. We're deeply honored by the presence of each one of you here today. If you're visiting with us, we extend a special welcome to you. and invite you to come back and worship with us here at Pyburn Street any time that you may have the opportunity to do so. There was a young woman who at the age of 25 suffered a terrible car accident that left her paralyzed from the neck down. But this lady was a Christian, and she was determined to make the most of her life in spite of the disabilities that she had. And although she was bound to a wheelchair, she learned that she could control that wheelchair by using controls from her mouth. And she could be seen nearly every day riding her wheelchair around town. She would go to Walmart and sit there just to greet people. But as I said, she was also a Christian. And each time that it was time for the church to meet, she could be seen heading down the sidewalk and driving her wheelchair roughly a mile from the nursing home where she lived to the meeting place of the Lord's church. She loved to worship God. She loved to be with her brothers and sisters in Christ. And she never let her disability hinder her. She never allowed that to keep her from fulfilling the duty that she had. She found great joy in being with her brothers and sisters in Christ. Sadly, she only lived to the age of 50. And ultimately, she passed away from complications of the paralysis that she had. But throughout her life, she continued to maintain that faithful devotion to God. She continued to be faithful in the assembly, attending every time that she possibly could. Friends, if this woman, with the shortcomings that she had in life, with the disabilities that she was facing, was able to find joy in assembling with her brothers and sisters in Christ and was able to make it a priority in her life of making sure that she was there, then we should be able to find that joy as well. We should be able to rejoice each and every time that we have an opportunity not only to come to this place, not only to be here on the Lord's day, and when we're able to have Bible classes, to be here midweek, yes, we look forward to that. We rejoice in those times. But it should also bring us great joy just to be with our brothers and sisters. To spend time together in leisure activities. To enjoy times of fellowship together. We should find great joy in assembling with our brothers and sisters. Another great example that we find from the pages of God's Word is David. David was a man who was described as a man after God's own heart. And he's a great example to us of someone who loved to worship God, who loved to assemble and worship. He wrote in Psalm 122 in verse 1, I was glad, he was joyous, when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. David and those men who were with him, they waited in eager anticipation for that time to come. Is that the mentality that we have? Is that the desire that we have, that we wait with eager anticipation for the times that we get to come together? For the times that we get to worship God? Do we look forward to the first day of the week? Do we look forward to worshiping God? Well, unfortunately, I fear that there are some Christians who don't have that excitement. Who don't have that joy in their life whenever it comes to worshiping God. In fact, there are some that it seems find no joy whatsoever in the assembly. They're here simply because they feel like it's an obligation. They're here because they feel like this is something that they have to do. And once they have checked off that requirement for the week, then they can breathe a sigh of relief because they don't have to worry about it again for seven more days. 
That's not the attitude that we need to have. That's not the feelings and the emotions that we should feel when we think about worshiping our God. But so often it's easy to recognize these individuals. Especially when the preacher gets up to preach or the song leader gets up to lead a song and you're able to look out and you can see on people's faces. Not so much so now with the masks on. But you can see in people's faces just the disinterest that is there. You can see that there is no desire in their hearts. You can tell that their minds are wandering off into other things. They're not focusing upon what they should be doing. And even our visitors are able to tell that. We probably all have visited at sister congregations before. And we observe, don't we? That's just the nature of the beast. That's who we are. We observe people. And we're able to tell those who are truly sincere from those that are there just going through the motions. We're able to tell those who really have that joy when it comes to worshiping God. When I see people that seem to be disinterested, that seem to be even, even bored with their service to God, it often makes me wonder, how do they not find joy and gladness in their service to God? Whenever they consider the things that God has done for them, how can they not rejoice in that? Are they not being encouraged by their brothers and sisters as they should be? You know, that could be part of it. Because one of our duties, as Dad read in the scripture reading just a few moments ago, is to build one another up. To stir one another up to love and to good works. Well, maybe they're not being stirred enough. Maybe their brothers and sisters aren't recognizing the need that's there. But then it always comes back to one thing. What can we do to help those individuals? What can we do to strengthen them? To help them find that joy that we so want them to have. Because when it comes down to it, folks, what we are doing here today is the greatest honor and privilege that we have in this life. And when we recognize that and we appreciate that, it should be a source of great encouragement to us. It helps us to draw closer to God. And we should love being around those of like precious faith because of that motivation because of that encouragement that we're supposed to glean from each other. I wish that every child of God had the same enthusiasm that David had. That they love when it's time to go and worship God. They love when they're able to assemble with their brothers and sisters. Now although assembling with the saints is a command, the scriptures tell us that this is something that we are required to do. We're also here to exhort one another. As dad read for us from the Hebrew letter, Hebrew 10 verses 24 and 25, and let us consider one another. Notice that it says that it's not just an individual thing that we're doing. Yes, when we come here, we are worshiping God, but we are to be considering one another. And let us consider one another to provoke or to stir up and to love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Yes, it is a command that we come together to worship God, but we should never view this as something that we have to do. We should always view these opportunities as something that we are blessed to be able to do. Something that we have the freedom in this country to be able to do openly without fear of molestation. But I think so often we take that for granted. But we need to keep things in the proper perspective. 
When we do, we will appreciate the many opportunities that we have to serve God. Now, the more that we assemble with the saints, whether it's on the first day of the week, whether it's midweek for Bible study, whether it's for gospel meetings, whether it's for ladies' Bible classes, regardless of what the occasion is that we have where we're able to be with our brothers and sisters in Christ, it will make us stronger in our faith. We should come away from those gatherings strengthened, uplifted and edified, having greater determination to stand up against the devil, to share the gospel with those that we come into contact with. When we get around those who are of like precious faith, it can't help but strengthen us. And folks, frankly, we need all the help we can get. It doesn't matter how strong you think you are. We need our brethren. We need that encouragement from one another. But I want to share just some pointers with you this morning. Some things that we can consider, some things that we can do that will help us in getting greater joy out of the assembly. Well, first, if we want to find joy in assembling with the saints, we need to prepare for assembling with the saints. We need to prepare our minds, prepare our thoughts before we come to this place. Folks, that can make a huge difference in the way that our mindset is and the way that we approach our worship. If our minds are already focused upon spiritual things, if we've already been preparing ourselves and getting into that train of thought, then we're going to be able to flow right into worship much easier. There are many, I know, that on Sunday mornings they will get up and they'll listen to recordings of hymns while they get ready for services. Or they'll turn on the television and they'll watch television shows like In Search of the Lord's Way or Speaking the Truth in Love. They'll turn on the radio and they'll listen to our radio program. Or they'll sit down and they'll pick up their Bible and they'll spend some time reading from it and meditating upon the Word. Why? Because they want to be in that frame of mind. Because they want to be prepared to worship God whenever they get here. But also, whether we realize it or not, our brothers and sisters appreciate our presence. Our brothers and sisters come to rely upon our presence. Every member of the Lord's body is important. They play a significant part, and it's important that we honor God with our presence, but also that we are there to encourage our brothers and sisters. This pandemic that we've been struggling with for over a year now, Folks, I've seen good and bad come from this. I've seen good in the fact that it has turned some people's minds back to God. It has caused them to focus in upon something that they had neglected. And gladly, we've seen growth in our congregation during this time. Even though we've been held back in so many different ways. We've continued to see growth, and I'm so thankful for that. But on the other hand, I've seen a lot of negativity come from this as well. We look around and we see people who aren't here. We see people that prior to the coming of this pandemic, they were faithful. They were here every time the doors were open. But you speak to those individuals now and they say, well, we're just so afraid. We're so scared to get out and come to services. Now, folks, I don't mean to be ugly by what I'm about to say, but then we get out and we see those same individuals at Walmart. We see them eating out in restaurants. We see them going to work. We see them going to school, going to places and going into situations where they are much more likely to contract this virus than they would be worshiping God. 
But what it comes down to is this. If we're looking for an excuse to forsake the assembly, we'll find one whether it makes logical sense or not. We need to recognize how important it is to come together with our brothers and sisters. How important the assembly is to our faith. I know that there are some of you here this morning that for extended periods of time you've had to be out of the services because of health concerns, things of that nature. And you know the impact that that has upon your faith. You know the weakness that you begin to feel. You feel the, the distancing that is there because you're not getting that interaction. You're not being with your brothers and sisters. And it causes you to appreciate that so much more when you're able to be back with your brothers and sisters. But for others, they use it as an opportunity to turn away. Any situation that comes along. Now folks, let me say this. I'm not talking about those who from time to time have to miss the assembly. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes we're sick. Sometimes we have jobs. We have careers that require us from time to time to miss the assembly. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those who forsake the assembly. Those who have the ability to attend but they decide not to. We need to recognize just how important it is to be with our brothers and sisters, to worship God, and how important our presence is to the encouragement of one another. The Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 20 through 26, But now are they many members, yet but one body, and the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness, for our comely parts have no need. But God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacketh that there should be no division in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. So clearly what Paul is saying is that every member of the body of Christ is significant. Their function is important to the success of the church. Paul says that we're to care for one another. That we're to encourage one another. We're to take note of those who are suffering so that we can lift them up and provide care for them. But we're also to give note to those who are being honored. You know, oftentimes when we meet together during our announcements, like we did this morning, we mentioned those that are struggling with their health. Well, why do we do that? So that we know what's taking place. So that we can pray for them. So we can encourage them. But also, from time to time, we talk about the good things, don't we? We talk about new grandchildren. That's always a good thing. We talk about uh, people getting promotions at work. We talk about people graduating from high school or from college. We talk about those good things because we want to rejoice with our brothers and sisters as well. That's what Paul's talking about. But the question that we have to come back to is this. If we're not with our brothers and sisters, how do we know about those things? If we don't come together and assemble with one another and be involved in people's lives, how are we going to be able to fulfill these commands? We're not. Now there may be a time that you look at yourself and you think, you know, I, I, I don't need that encouragement. I, I feel encouraged enough. I feel strong enough. Well, Paul says that there's others that are not that strong. There are others who need to be built up. And so when it comes down to it, we don't need to be thinking about ourselves. We don't need to be thinking about what our needs are. We need to be seeking out ways that we can help others. 
But also coming back to something that I mentioned earlier in the lesson, we need to be mindful of our visitors. And I am so thankful that it's getting to the point where we have visitors in just about every service. I'm thankful for that. We have people from the community that are taking interest in their souls, that are wanting to come and to worship God and to be a part of this body. I'm so thankful for that. But we need to be mindful of those visitors because so often we only have one opportunity to set that good example. We only have one opportunity to show them the love of God. We do this through encouraging them, through our participation in worship. And folks, knowing that we could make a difference in someone's life that ultimately will lead them to becoming a child of God and going to heaven, we should rejoice in that fact. We should rejoice that we have that opportunity. But also we need to consider Jesus and the sacrifice that he made so that we could be here. But also the Bible teaches that when we come together, Jesus is here with us. When we come together in this place, he tells us in Matthew 18 and verse 20, for where two or more are gathered in his name, there he is also. Folks, Jesus is here today. We should rejoice in that fact. Rejoice in what he has done for us and that he is here and that his blood is still cleansing us of our sins and giving us the hope of heaven. We should rejoice in that fact. But also when we think about the things that we're allowed to do when we worship, we should rejoice. Now I know there are some people that your favorite thing to do is not singing. I know that. I mean, that's just, people are different. But whenever we consider the words that we're singing, whenever we listen to the melodies that are rising up before the throne of God and realizing that we are praising Him with the things that we're saying, it should bring us great joy. But not only that, when we assemble and we have the opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper, Yes, we remember the, the sadness of Jesus' crucifixion. We remember the pain that he went through on our behalf. But we rejoice in the fact that he rose from the dead. And we rejoice in the fact that he has given us this memorial that we have the honor of partaking each and every first day of the week. We do that in memory of Jesus. We should rejoice in that fact. We should rejoice whenever a man stands before this congregation and offers a prayer. As we pray along with that individual realizing that that is the closest to God that we're going to get because we are communicating to God through our prayers. We should rejoice in having that avenue of prayer. Whenever the preacher or a Bible class teacher stands up and presents a lesson from God's Word, we should rejoice that the truth of the gospel is being presented, that we can apply it to our lives and that will help us to be stronger in the future. We should rejoice in that fact. And yes, we should even rejoice when we have an opportunity to give of our means because this is a privilege that God has given to us to be able to support the work of the church. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 2 that everyone is to lay by in store as God has prospered him on the first day of the week. It's an honor to be able to support the work of the church. But I want to share one last thing with you this morning and then the lesson will be yours. We should find great joy in assembling with our brothers and sisters in Christ because the more we assemble, the more we grow. The more we assemble, the more we're going to find ourselves maturing in the faith. This is a desire that we should all have. That we want to become more spiritual each and every day of the week.
Peter said in 2 Peter 3 and verse 18 that we are to grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. So that charge to us is that we are to be growing and maturing in the faith. Growing in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord. Folks, it's common knowledge that the more we are involved in something, the more we will come to appreciate it. The more time we devote to something, the more precious it becomes to us. And it's no different when it comes to assembling with the saints. Now at first, we might find it difficult to make it to all services. Right now, it shouldn't be that difficult because we're only having one service a week. But Lord willing, before too long, we'll be able to get back to having our Bible classes. We'll be able to get back to Sunday night. We'll be able to get back to Wednesday night, that midweek pick-me-up that we need from time to time. Now, sometimes we may find it difficult, but something that you'll find is the more that you make it a priority to assemble with the saints every time that you possibly can, you're going to come to find it an exhilarating experience. Something that you look forward to. Something that you yearn for. Something that you cannot wait. And you'll get to the point where you don't want to miss. You don't want to be away. You yearn for your brethren's presence. You yearn to worship God. But it may be this morning that there's someone here that is struggling in this area. Well, ask yourself this. What's more important? Your life or God's desire? What's more important to you, the things of this life, the things that take up your time in this life, or setting aside a little bit of time each week to come together, to worship God? You'll find that it will make a difference. You'll find that you'll grow stronger. You'll have greater motivation in your life, and you'll come to the point where you want to seize every opportunity that comes along. But you have to take that first step. You have to make that decision that so much is humanly possible you're going to attend. You're going to be here to worship God. And hopefully we all can get to that point where just like David we can say, I was happy when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now this morning you may examine yourself and you may find that in your spiritual life you've not been as faithful as you should be. You realize that you've been allowing the things of this life to hold you back in your spiritual growth. Then we would encourage you this morning to renew that zeal for your faith. Get back to that first love. and Leave this place today with a renewed desire to serve God each and every day. Or if you look at yourself and you realize that you've strayed from the faith and you need to be restored. You've allowed sin or discouragement to cause you to fall away from God. Then come forward this morning and make that known. Let us go to the Father in prayer on your behalf. Or it may be this morning when you consider your spiritual life, you realize that you've never become a Christian. That you're still lost. Then we would encourage you this morning that if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that you will decide today that you're going to turn away from sin. That you're going to turn away from the things of this world and set your sights on things above. Then come forward. Confess that faith that you have in Christ. Be baptized. Your sins will be washed away. This morning, if you examine yourself, you need to respond to the Lord's invitation. We encourage you to come at this time while together we stand and sing.